Welcome to Key Stage Wiki. What would happen to the population of grass if all the lions became extinct? That might sound like a strange question at first, but when you think about it, all organisms on Earth are connected. There is a network of relationships between all organisms in a community. This is known as interdependence. One way in which organisms are linked is by feeding relationships. Every living thing on Earth either provides food for others or depends on other living things for their food. So what happens to one population of organisms affects them all. Scientists represent these feeding relationships with a diagram called a food chain. This is a diagram that shows the transfer of energy between organisms. In this food chain, we can see that zebra rely on grass for food, lions rely on zebra for their food, and vultures rely on the lions for their food. However, as we will see in a later video on food webs, the vulture is a scavenger that will eat any meat it can find. So let's think back to our original question. If there were no lions, then the zebra would have no predators eating them, so there would be a greater number of zebra, which would mean more grass would be eaten, lowering the population of grass. So even though the lions don't eat the grass, the survival of the grass depends upon the existence of the lions. A food chain is divided into trophic levels. In this example, grass is the first trophic level, zebra are the second, lions are the third, and vultures are the fourth trophic level. In this food chain, an oak tree is the first trophic level. Caterpillars rely on the leaves of the oak tree for food, so they occupy the second trophic level. Squirrels eat the caterpillars, so they occupy the third trophic level. And since an owl hunts, kills and eats squirrels, then an owl is the fourth trophic level. In this food chain, phytoplankton is the first trophic level. Krill are the second, penguins are the third, and killer whales are the fourth trophic level. At the base of the food chain, on the first trophic level, we always have a producer. In this example, grass is the producer. A producer is an organism that makes its own food. Usually this is done by photosynthesis, where an organism uses sunlight as their source of energy. Plants are the most well-known example, but there are other organisms which photosynthesize like algae, which, even though it's green and photosynthesizes, is not a plant, as it doesn't have roots or leaves. There are also some producers that do not use photosynthesis, such as bacteria trapped underground in deep caves, or those so deep in the ocean that sunlight cannot reach, providing a completely different energy source for an entire food chain. Suffice to say, at this stage, you only need to worry about photosynthetic producers. The trophic level above producers are known as primary consumers. In this example, we have zebra. These are organisms that rely on producers for their food. On the third trophic level, we have secondary consumers in this case, a lion. These are organisms that rely on primary consumers for their food. Finally, on the fourth trophic level, we have tertiary consumers. In this example, we have a vulture. These are organisms that rely on secondary consumers for their food. In this example food chain, the producers are phytoplankton because they make their own food. 
The primary consumers are krill, because they feed on the phytoplankton. The secondary consumers are penguins, because they feed on the krill. And the tertiary consumers are killer whales. So, what do the arrows represent on a food chain? These show us the direction of energy transfer from one organism to the next. Now, remember when drawing your own food chain, it doesn't need to be written from bottom to top. You can also draw it from left to right. The only important direction here is the arrows going in the right direction, from the food to its consumer, showing that energy is transferred from food to the consumers. Luckily, you also don't need to be an artist. It's enough just to write the names of the organisms with the arrows to show the direction of energy transfer. Can you spot the error in this food chain? Pause the video now if you need time to look carefully. That's right, the arrows were pointing in the wrong direction. The arrows should always be pointing in the direction of energy transfer, not pointing from an animal to the organism that it wants to eat. The answers to the following questions are shown at the end of the video. See if you can write your own two food chains using these organisms. Pause the video now to give it a try. Write this food chain out and then add labels including the different consumers, the producer and a label for each trophic level. Pause the video. Sometimes a biologist might observe organisms consuming one another. Use this description to write your own food chain. For more information on food chains, visit keystagewiki.com. And for further videos, like this video and subscribe to the channel.